Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Science versus Appeal to Authority. The process of science is people looking at what's going on in the real world, in the real universe, and trying to come up with theories to explain it. An appeal to authority is a completely different idea, however. Journalists like Potholer love to make appeals to authority. Potholer frequently points out in his videos that professional scientists said this, or professional scientists said that. That's not an examination of ideas or data, rather that's an examination of what some academics said. If we want to do actual science, we have to look at whether or not what the academics said makes any sense. The process of examining ideas and data is doing science. By contrast, the process of simply quoting expert opinion is an appeal to authority. The great American physicist Richard Feynman said, Have no respect whatsoever for authority. Forget who said it. Instead, look what he starts with, where he ends up, and ask yourself, is it reasonable? So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to look at Potholer's theory that ice ages are primarily due to CO2 feedback and see if that makes any sense. This is the graph of Antarctic ice core data showing temperature variation in blue and carbon dioxide concentration in red over the past 450,000 years. You can see that Earth has cycled between periods of warmth and cold several times over the last 450,000 years. And as temperature has varied, so has carbon dioxide levels. The theory that Potholer presented for the cause of ice ages is that we get very small orbital changes which start temperature declines, and then carbon dioxide feedback is what causes most of the decline in temperature into the depths of the ice age. So now we're going to look at the science of feedback and see why that doesn't make any sense. We're all familiar with audio feedback, where you have a microphone, an amplifier, a speaker, and generally a person talking into the microphone. The whole idea of this setup is to make the sound of the person's voice louder. The potential problem with this setup is that the microphone is not only picking up sound from the person talking, but it's also picking up sound from the speaker. Imagine what would happen if the speaker was providing more input to the microphone than the person talking was. It would just keep getting louder and louder and louder. That's what we call a gain of greater than one in engineering terms. It wouldn't make any difference if the person stopped talking. He just created the initial sound. But after that, with a gain of greater than one, the sound is coming out of the speaker, feeding back into the microphone, getting louder, keeps going around this loop and gets louder and louder and louder. And we quickly get to the situation of that horrible feedback sound which we're all familiar with. So that is Potholer's theory, that we get a small change due to orbital cycles and then a much larger feedback caused by carbon dioxide. So now let's discuss the consequences of Potholer's theory. This is a graph of an audio pulse with no feedback. The sound pulse occurs, then quickly drops back down to zero. After that, there's no more sound. But if we have an amplifier and speaker which are producing a gain of greater than one back into the microphone, what happens to the signal is that rather than going down to zero, it just keeps getting larger and larger over time. And eventually we're plugging our ears because it's making a horrible sound. The only thing that stops this is the limits of the amplifier. We eventually we get to that point and we just get that horrible square wave sound of clipping which we know is feedback. I'm not going to play the sound for you but I think her face explains it pretty clearly. Now let's look at a gain of less than one. We get an initial pulse and then it damps down over time and eventually we'll go down to zero. This is what we want an amplifier to do. We want it to make the sound louder but we want it to damp out over time. And remember, a gain of less than one means that there's less sound coming from the speaker into the microphone than from the person's voice. If there was more sound feeding back from the speaker into the microphone than coming from the person's voice, that would be a gain of greater than one. That quickly becomes an uncontrollable situation where each oscillation gets larger and larger until the amplifier reaches its limits or someone turns the power off to it. If the person stops talking, it doesn't really make any difference because most of the sound coming into the microphone is coming from the speaker, not from his voice. So let's go back and look at Potholer's theory again. He said we get very small changes due to orbital variations and then very large amounts of feedback. Well, that implies a feedback or gain of much greater than one. That would be an impossible situation because it would keep getting colder and colder. 
It would come in out of ice ages. It would keep getting hotter and hotter. There'd be no way to stop it. The implication of this is that the feedback from the carbon dioxide has to be smaller than the other factors in the system. That's the only way which the feedback can damp down over time, is if we have a gain of less than 1, or an amplification of less than 1. As Milinkovic explained, the cause of ice ages is that we get large variations in the ratio of solar energy received during summer and winter at 65 degrees north, depending on the position of the Earth's orbital cycles. Sometimes the orbital cycles put the position of the Earth farthest from the Sun during the northern hemisphere winter. This causes ice to start building up at 65 degrees north. The ice is white, it reflects sunlight, and as the ice spreads, the Earth cools further and further. So we get these feedbacks from expanding ice, decreasing carbon dioxide. A lot of things are going on that are making the Earth get colder. But ultimately, what turns it around is the orbital cycles. The orbital cycles have to be stronger than the feedback. Most of these changes in temperature during glacial cycles has to be due to the orbital cycles. If the feedback was greater than 1, the system would be unstable, and there'd be no way to stop the direction it was headed. So Potholer's theory of a small orbital change and a lot of feedback is impossible scientifically. Examining data and theory to see if it makes any sense in scientific terms is what we call doing science. Quoting a bunch of academics who don't know what they're talking about is an appeal to authority. It doesn't matter how many of them are. If they don't know what they're talking about, they're wrong. Richard Feynman said, Science is the belief in the ignorance of the experts. He also said, It doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with the experiment, it's wrong. Galileo said, By denying scientific principles, one may maintain any paradox. And that's exactly what Potholer's theory of ice ages does. It denies scientific principles of feedback. As far as Potholer's appeals to authority go, Galileo said, in questions of science, the authority of a thousand is not worth the humble reasoning of a single individual. When I refer to this quote online, normally some climate alarmist will come along with some inane comment like, well, you're no Galileo, as if that somehow invalidated the principle which Galileo was laying out. And the real point of this quote is that people like Potholer who rely on appeals to the authority of a thousand rather than humble reasoning are not doing science. Potholer originally agreed to do a live debate, and that's what we need to do to resolve this. Then I can point out his appeals to authority and other scientific nonsense real time. I hope he goes through with that. I doubt he's willing to do that, but in the meantime, visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.